Again, as regards our Congress of Classical Education and ahead of us, a very important session, a discussion where we will be discussing opportunities, needs, and possibilities of uh, implementing classical education today in the Polish educational system. It's very important because uh, we have to take into account all the factors that have an impact on our reality. Before introducing our panelists, I would like to uh, welcome Mr. Sławomir Adamiec, representing the Ministry of Education and Science. And now, let me introduce our speakers. Uh, Father Professor Zdzisław Klawka, a redemptorist from 20, 2002 to 2007, provincial of that order since November 2002, editor of Radio Maria and Television Trwam, and a lecturer in ethics at the Higher School of Social and Media Culture in Torun, and former lecturer in moral theology at the Redemptorist Theological Seminary in Tuchów. And from 2012, the, he took up the post of rector at the College of Social and media culture in Torun. Now it's an academy. Among us, we also have Professor Włodzimierz Dubacz, a long-standing professor of philosophy at the John Paul II Catholic University of Lublin, employed successively at the Department of Philosophy and Religion. Then he, uh, he was the head of the newly established Department of Philosophy of God in the years 2004-2014. And in the recent years, uh, the professor worked at the Department of Philosophical Anthropology and Philosophy of Law at the Faculty of Philosophy of the Catholic University of Lublin, uh, John, John Paul II. Good afternoon, professor. I would also like to welcome Dr. Arthur Goretsky, uh, Director of the Department of General Education and Core Cur Curriculum Studies of the Ministry of Education and um, Science, and also the Plenipotentiary of the Minister for Core Curriculum and Handbooks. He's also a historian. My name is Jakub Moros, and I'm employed at TVP Historia, TVP Cultura, TV channels, and it's a great pleasure for me to be the facilitator of this session. Uh, just to, I would like to warn you, all of you, especially our speakers, is that I will also be the uh, ad advocate of the evil uh, in this debate sometimes because this debate uh, is uh, to be not only dramatic, but it has to shed light on the most important issue we need to concentrate on, but uh, which are put in question, often um, debated publicly. But before moving on to those uh, subjects we have to discuss, I would like to ask our speakers to tell us what's the aim of this Congress, the aim of this kind of dialogue, of this kind of talks. The aim, uh, in other words, of introducing some elements of classical education today in Poland. What's at stake, in fact? Father, Rector, personally, I would like to congratulate um, you for organizing this Congress, classical education opportunities and uh, needs for its implementation. It seems that when we are asking about the role and the need for classical education in the modern world, it seems an anachronism because we are in a culture of progress. Uh, so in, from the period of enlightenment, it uh, it tends to diminish the importance of tradition and the past. We are now living in a time of uh, revolution, starting from the French Revolution, uh, the revolution of 68, and now we are talking about technological revolution. So what really counts here is uh, the belief in progress, utilitarism, and that's all. And how about classical education in all that? I think that uh, 
protect the culture. Uh, in order for the culture not to be chaotic, we have to come back to our roots, to the roots of classical education. So we can see that this classical education, uh, even if there is some reluctance towards it among uh, uh, people who uh, are part of this education today. I think it's a prerequisite to introduce this kind of education if we don't want to fall into chaos in culture, culture as such. So we need to get back to, to the basics of classical education. But Rector, please uh, let me ask. I think it's a dam uh, uh, which will allow us not to, not to introduce chaos. Uh, but uh, when we are talking about acquiring knowledge, about understanding knowledge, is it about some kind of chaos which goes beyond transferring knowledge, but that would concern the uh, upbringing ideals of a human being. How do you understand it? Well, how do you understand this chaos? Well, I, here I mean not only uh, some cognitive uh, values. Two years ago, the late uh, philosopher Stanislav Rigiel uh, uh, disciple of uh, John Paul II said that this uh, is something which is contrary to the culture that we have uh, learned about. And uh, now there is something which is contrary to, to, to this culture, and it was called producture, not culture, but producture. What does it mean? It's not only about cognitive uh, values, it's about practical uh, values which are present in our lives. He compares his father, who was a farmer, to a great philosopher. And uh, nowadays, uh, scientists are uh, craftsmen. Uh, and he has nothing against, he's not against the craftsmanship, but um, it seems that uh, people who are part of the intellectual elite would like only to leave a product behind. And that's all, something specific, concrete, something which would not be an idea. Well, that's why he considers that his father was a real philosopher, someone who uh, was dealing with culture because the soil he was cultivating uh, made him humble. And there was a specific link, a bond between this farmer and the land uh, he was uh, on. And this was this gift of trust between the seed which would be there in the soil. It uh, teaches us about the trust. Uh, a farmer who um, uh, puts a seed in the soil, he knows that there are some values based on truth. And uh, we are now entering uh, this area of basic values, which are now being pushed away uh, from our modern lives from education. So this is truth. Uh, goodness and uh, beauty. This is something which is not a um, reference point anymore for uh, people. And uh, culture and production, those are two worlds which are now being created by craftsmen and who uh, consider themselves as scientists. And often those are people who are humble enough to discover the truth. They are courageous enough to discover the truth only if they become people of real culture. Professor, how would you define the aim of this effort of uh, reintroducing classical education today in the Polish uh, schooling system? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I will start by answering the first question you asked. What is the meaning of our today's meeting and its aim? And then the information will be spread all over Poland that this Congress took place. It's to uh, draw people's attention on what is uh, 
fully-fledged uh, education. Now we have only like vocational training or something. So this Congress is to show how to fully understand and perceive uh, classical education and how uh, it's uh, necessary to be introduced in uh, education. It's a sign, uh, it's a warning showing that we have to get back to some basics, otherwise we will lose any uh, sense and uh, barbary will uh, uh, rain, start raining. So this is uh, seen from the practical and theoretical point of view. You can see it on in the streets of uh, our towns. Uh, so people uh, have lost uh, common sense. And this starts from universities, from our elites who present somehow a false picture of the world, of the human being, of uh, the meaning of uh, their lives. And this all goes through uh, social media, the media as such, and go to mass culture, which brings up people. It's not the school, it's not the family which uh, brings up uh, young people. It's uh, the social media who are an authority for young people. Those are celebrities. Those are other people who are famous, and we need to take it into account. So the whole Congress, this trend of getting back to the basics to the classical education is to show that uh, um, our lives uh, have a meaning, that our uh, life does not end here on earth. And But in order to do so, we have to get back to being wise, to this natural wisdom. Without um, this natural wisdom, we will not um, preserve faith. There is no faith among the youngest because there is no proper soil for the seed. Why um, the youngest don't uh, learn about methodology? Um, because they are not interested in uh, They uh, don't have such classes. 45 classes, 45 hours they spend on the internet and two hours uh, of religious class, class of religion and one hour of uh, holy mass. So there is a huge pressure against this Christian vision of the world. Well, there is a discrepancy between two visions of uh, human life. Uh, we got somehow lost. We uh, uh, are not anymore linked with those uh, basic foundations of uh, ancient times, Greek ancient times. And that's why we have axiological chaos now in culture. Let's get back to reality, not to thinking about the world, but to getting to know what the world is. is um, do not create, create the truth because because it's a false image. We are not able to live in this false world, in fact. We are talking about the crisis of culture, in fact. I don't know if I have answered your question. Director, how would you define what is at stake? It's a hard thing to answer now after those two speeches. But from the very beginning, I've seen that a lot of people were involved in organizing uh, the Congress of Classical Education. And I think that their aim, and my aim, was first of all to talk about what is classical education. Uh, different people, different uh, representatives of different groups uh, had a say on what it is. And the second uh, thing was to create a, an area, a, a meeting uh, point uh, for debates, for an exchange, for a dialogue, for sharing experience for those people who uh, have experienced something in their school, in their educational uh, sphere, or maybe they have already implemented some uh, classical education elements. Maybe it's not a whole curriculum, or maybe they are searching for such solutions. I think that there is no such meeting point in the public sphere. So that's the main aim of this Congress, Congress of Classical Education. I would like to ask about the ideal which is rooted in ancient times, ancient Greece, and it, when we think about it, it makes us think about ancient uh, 
Greece, and uh, let's remind the characteristics of uh, the Greek ideal of uh, humanity, paideia, which makes a link between cognitive values and ethics, and it was more than a school ideal. It was paideia, uh, and it was not only about uh, transferring knowledge, but about uh, achieving a goal which was uh, to achieve a um, template of humanity. Tragedy, for example, shaped the perception of human fate. It was not only the knowledge about dramatic art. We would exercise our bodies because there was a link between physical beauty and wisdom. So it was also about the, the beauty of the soul. Therefore, we are talking about an ideal that is greater than just education itself. After enlightenment and up to nowadays, in spite of many issues, mentally, many people live their lives online. Their intellectual life takes place on the internet. But I think it's not even a full, like fully proper intellectual life. What teachers say is that they're not responsible for upbringing. They are only responsible for education understood as the transfer of knowledge. Also, due to liberal thinking, even though it's not, no longer an ideology, it's just a universal conviction that teachers are not supposed to force their point of view, their life, um, their, their view of the world and ideology on the, on the pupils. So the question is whether the world of education and the world of ideals, of upbringing, moral upbringing in some, in, in the understanding of transferring ideals, can they still be combined in the contemporary world? from the point of view of liberty, of freedom, and also from a practical standpoint. I think that pupils themselves are not ready for that, and the families are, are not prepared for that. Professor, you have mentioned this. Uh, can you comment the, the circumstances, the environment in which young people grow today is sick? Let's call it. Uh, let's call it sick. There is a lot of ideology, and in schools, uh, this um, there is naturalism. So na nature is our mother, because allegedly we came from the monkeys. So um, we forget that human beings were created by the god, and we have goals not only on Earth but further goals after life. So if this is being questioned, it no longer makes sense. We clash with the big world, with the cosmos presented by cosmology. Universe feels so great that even God becomes small. The cosmos is the absolute and not the God. So this is why it becomes very difficult to rationally absorb knowledge. It's a big crisis of philosophy. The world is no longer a matter of philosophical thinking, and we leave it to natural scientists, sciences. Scientism has appeared, and other strange things. Philosophy is only about thinking nowadays. Philosophy no longer examines the world. This is the matter of natural sciences, and Philosophy is only responsible for categorizing knowledge. But this is where ideologies come in, because people need purpose, they need order. So religion is being questioned and contested, 
and is being replaced with other things. Truth is being questioned. Truth is found in natural sciences, but they operate on hypothesis. We have pluralism instead of truth, pluralism of values, because different people have different values. It, they correlate with our emotions, with our will, so there is no longer a good that would be universal. It only depends on what you want. This is how human life is being constructed, a social, political life, and we are disconnected from the real world. We live in an imaginary world that does not stem from examining the real world. Human beings can come to their potential through interaction with other people, not with the media, with the TV. Like in the movies, we see people are killed and they, uh, they come back to life. It's not a real world, it's virtual world, and it hinders natural development of young people. So what can we do about it, Professor? I think we should uh, think about it. Because we have diagnosed the problem, but how can we cure it? We cannot abolish the internet. We cannot remove connection to the internet. So young people have a different way of interacting with the world and with other uh, people. So can classical education respond to this challenge? Yes, but proposing classical education, we are trying to make use of a great heritage of many generations is tapping into European culture and tradition. We should not cut off, cut ourselves off from tradition and forgetting tradition is crazy. People are no longer interested in Aristotle, but who? Who are we when we forget the tradition? We become barbarians. I've heard that it's a big danger and problem because we give up a great heritage, uh, truth, beauty, goodness, wonderful heritage of generations, 2,000 years. This cannot be done. If it happened in agriculture, would we give up modern agriculture and just go back to sticks? We need more humility. Let's have a look at what's been said in the room today. We need to go back to the great minds, the great works from, from the past. We need to contemplate them. The heritage that comes from the past also in reference to human world. This would transcend the internet and we would be able to see things the way they are. We need contemplation of the great works from the past to become actually educated, to fill our heads with the high culture and we, it would provide a, another point of view on culture and the world. So we need to tap into the roots, to the the heritage, the, cult the cultural tradition. Yes. You mentioned um, the Greek discoveries about the truth about human being and also the methods that support the development of human potential. I think this is the key to answer your question about what uh, classical, what purpose classical education can serve. We need to start as, uh, by asking ourselves what is a human being. If human beings have a certain potential that requires development like intellectual v volition, we need to ask ourselves what kind of support is needed to develop those skills appropriately. If we assume that human nature means that we've been created for a certain goal, then development is not something that can go freely or that can be invented from the scratch, from zero, like today, like some people do today. It should be about discovering human nature. It should be about 
supporting human being in their natural development to be able to achieve their goals both on earth and after death which um, is being complemented by Christianity. Christianity accepts ancient educational tradition as our own, complementing it with the extraterrestrial aspect. So the way you say um, enlightenment actually brought darkening and lack of clarity towards um, human nature. It was about reductionism, reducing human cognition to only one sphere. If today we are looking on, looking at education systems based on dichotomies, on the one hand, encyclopedias, on the other hand, soft competences, hard skills, we would bounce from one world to another and would never find remedies. And in my opinion, classical education is the remedy because we do not counter, contradict or juxtapose encyclopedism and skills. We speak of developing human beings, making them function better, strengthening volition through upbringing to make it work according to its purpose. So for intellect to become to work better, it requires some materials to work on. So this is the knowledge that we supply and it builds within human beings. And on the basis of that knowledge, our skills are built. Perception, wisdom, values, reasons related to truth and goodness. So this is why we combine it with education and upbringing goes together with education. It's not a contradiction. I wouldn't separate them. There is no education without upbringing and there is no upbringing without education. However, when we speak about proportionality and responsibility for both, I think that the proper order of things would be family would be responsible for upbringing while school would be responsible for education but remembering what I just said two sentences ago that no education can be done fully without upbringing so at least part of upbringing you have the experience of a lecturer of a rector of a college of a university so do we have a recipe, some kind of prescription for us how to combine those uh, ideals, ethical ideals and knowledge? I wouldn't give you a recipe or a prescription, but what I want to share with you after listening to the previous speakers, I'm quite lucky because uh, I work in the world of academia and uh, edu naturally education is about formation, about shaping human life. And this is the same reality. So I see it on a daily basis. Let me give you an example. Not so long ago, I met a graduate of our uh, college and I asked her, what do you remember the most from your studies? And what did she say? Father, at any time of the day or night, I could come to the, um, to the temple, to the chapel. And um, we are not a Catholic university, but we care about uh, the spiritual aspect while young people very often respond very well to this uh, spiritual area. I think it's a very good thing to have a spiritual area for students to be able to reflect, 
sometimes the night is a time of reflection. Of course, there are different things that people do during the night, but I'm a night owl. And uh, when I come to the chapel uh, in the evening, in the night, sometimes I see young people, very often like uh, couples praying, couples of uh, fiancés uh, holding hands and praying together, kneeling in front of the altar. So there is some spark inside of people. So I don't know what happens in other universities, but when we start the academic year, for those from the first year, first year students, we have uh, propedeutics days. Those five days are used to make them acquainted with the, with the university, with the site, the venue, themselves, to acquaint themselves with each other. We explain the, ba the cultural basis, uh, the rules of uh, good uh, conduct in the student's house. Also, how to address other people, how to be respectful. And we pay attention to that throughout the year. But those five days at the beginning of explaining to young people that there is a certain culture that you need to respect and certain rules of uh, human interaction, that gives us uh, like a door that opens to a different world, not just a world of knowledge, but also spirit and culture. And this is something that helps them to meet other students, but also to make it easier to start a new academic year in a new place, to feel that they are becoming adults, that they need to be responsible for their freedom, and at the same time, they have support from us, from our circles. So we stress that a lot, that we must do the upbringing for ourselves as well. Student um, council, uh, student authorities are also important here because young people themselves create this community of students shaping the attitudes I'm a priest, but in Toruń, most people are secular, but they are not ashamed of their faith. On Thursdays, we have Holy Mass, and lecturers, teachers go together with the students to participate in the Holy Mass. Uh, there is a break, there is no class during that time, because this is the time for meeting with our highest master. And when I talk to students, they know, they understand. This professor also kneels down with, together with them and shows humility. So they can see later, they can see them smiling because they can recharge their spiritual power, their strength to come back to the lecture room with their batteries recharged, with bravery, but also humility and um, appreciation to keep getting to know the world. We often mention contemporary ideologies. I will uh, mention my uh, own experience on the basis of my friendship with uh, Professor Jan Szyszko, who, uh, was in, who inspired us to start um, postgraduate um, environmental protection studies. And our, we, we give theoretical classes, but later there are many days when um, students travel to uh, Piwa, to a research station, to Tuczno. And in that research station in the forest, they can learn uh, the secrets of nature. Lectures are lectures, of course, but... Uh Having a teacher that would uh, help understanding the uh, secrets of nature, this is something of great value. To contemplate nature is great. What's more, on Sunday, because uh, this is also the proposal of the minister, is that a day, even a working day, would start with the Holy Mass. It was not our initiative, but it was the initiative of the professor who thinks that we will 
not be able to look properly at the nature uh, if we don't discover the secret of the Creator. It's everything is like a gift. What is around me is a gift, and this allows to contemplate. And uh, a human being that is able to see a gift in his life, the authority of his parents, the gift of his uh, kids, his relatives, the gift of uh, the time he's had for studying, for getting knowledge. Uh, those people look at their lives in a different way. I could give a lot of testimonies of this kind, but we are very um, really surprised that those young people uh, quickly uh, set a family uh, just after finishing their studies. Uh, they get married. I have a lot of graduates. I have a son graduate who works in uh, the Polish television. His name is David. He works in the news, and uh, he uh, recently uh, came with his wife and his child uh, and we are very proud of the fact that some of them are working in a very secular so to say environment uh, in line with our moderators point of view however they st still have those values they built their lives on those values so I'm really optimistic maybe it's not good to think to be uh, in an be optimistic but the values which are serve I live for the proof is that that the young people really need it and uh, I don't know how many teachers are among us but uh, people uh, perceive uh, differently uh, the members of the clergy and uh, we often encounter different uh, uh, perspective, treatment, and those young people really want uh, to discuss something with us, don't want to talk with us. And uh, uh, in exchange for some bad behaviors that we experience, we have people who are very positive, who appreciate the company of a reverend of a father and uh, just let me finish with one thing uh, answering your question uh, the link between education and um, formation this is one reality it, which means that those young people uh, really Uh, are aware of the fact that they have to live according to those values and not according to some ideologies. This is how they want to live. And we keep discovering that our life, life in the media, is a fiction. So, but I think that uh, not everyone follows uh, those social media because once they acquire some knowledge in the field of uh, journalism or so. They, they uh, shoot some movies, and there was a competition for uh, short movies, and uh, there was uh, the subject of this competition was the uh, Museum of Polish Children in which 18 etudes, 18 short uh, movies were done and shown, and it was really moving to see how young people with their cameras, with all the other sound and all kinds of effects could uh, show what was happening, the atmosphere of uh, the camp, the children camp in Łódź. And uh, the, the students uh, have shown uh, this history from a different perspective. Um, the rector, uh, it's very comforting what you, what you are saying, but please, uh, I'm really sorry to be uh, pessimistic, but um, as I was the facilitator of some uh, programs, uh, TV programs about the crisis in higher education, for example, and I could hear then from some representatives of the Polish Academia about the crisis of universities as such in Poland. 
the crisis of the higher education, which uh, is stopping from some dangerous um, ideologies and uh, trends which transform universities into a factory of graduates. Those students, those graduates, have to be prepared for the job market, and uh, thus the a university becomes a company, a plant. And uh, this, those are templates from the Western countries, uh, which are taken over here. And I have heard a lot of criticism, for example, about uh, reforms introduced by the previous Minister of Education, who, according to my uh, speakers um, uh, transformed universities into um, uh, entities which would prepare for the job market and not only uh, and not uh, um, for um, something that would give education as such. And what's more, those reforms were aiming at at uh, concentrating only on some publications, for example, English-speaking publications. This concerns, for example, the research on Polish literature and so on. Professor, how do you perceive, in the context of our debate, the uh, crisis in uh, the higher education? What should be done here in order to um, uh, to uh, go out from the crisis. So I would uh, like to answer directly, but before that, uh, let me refer to what was mentioned before, to the problems you just, you've just mentioned. What does it mean to be a mature person? Because the aim of the education is to transform a human being into a mature human being. What does it mean, mature? mature, which means that a person has seen how things are. And A levels was supposed to be, for example, such a stage in life. And this is the purpose of education. Classical education, well, there are different methods how to achieve it. And when taking into account the whole tradition and the heritage of European culture. But there is also another element in the classical education. It's not only about educating young people and children. It's about opening uh, people's uh, lives to this knowledge so that they become more mature because we develop throughout the whole life. And this doesn't finish with uh, uh, completing studies. Uh, a master's degree does not mean that we finish acquiring knowledge, and uh, this would be absurd. We do it till uh, we die. We learn till we die. So uh, classical education is um, entering this big, great culture to become a better person, to be wiser, and to live better, to see what is the meaning of our life. Uh, this is why universities were established in the Middle Ages, and a lot has changed in the meantime, and this ideal was somehow abolished. Now we have vocational schools. This is what universities are. There's no uh, hierarchy now, and um, university, a university in the past it was um, was teaching humanities in uh, so that we live better, so better humans. Now universities are no longer like that. Now they've lost their aim. They don't uh, pursue the same rule of unity of teaching. Uh, there is like there are different subjects, different majors. Uh, there is like for example chemistry, physics, and so on. They are not linked with each other. There is geography, there is pedagogy, and what is something which is common for all uh, of them? Nothing. And uh, this is the theory of evolutionism. And um, in the past, the basics were, was philosophy, and uh, the crowning of that was philosophy. Now it's not anymore the case at universities. There is the problem of the pluralistic view of the world. There is no rule of unity um, now there uh, in the academia world. Director, 
how do you perceive the link between the crisis of our universities and the needs for classical education and what would be the uh, remedy the remedy for this problem what should be done at universities is uh, just to get back to classical education this would be a remedy but just to answer your question of course i am fully agree with what was said by professor is that the medieval understanding of a university is not anymore uh, up to date. Uh, maybe there are some elements at universities concerning this kind of approach, but in the majority of cases, those are vocational, professional specialization at the, the highest level. So we need to like um, make a separation between university uh, entities and uh, those who teach humanities and uh, technical universities because now they are like all in one and we are all satisfied with that. But that's not uh, true. When it comes to schooling, we concentrated now on higher education, but when talking about implementing tools, that um, are provided uh, by classical education. Here I mean especially uh, uh, artists liberal, liberales, especially the three first ones concerning grammar, dialectics, and rhetorics. So this uh, concerns especially this uh, um, lower level of education. We cannot talk about um, a full academic development when there is no proper preparation at earlier stages, which means for the youngest one, for children, and for high school graduates. We need to think how those tools, which uh, first allow us to achieve some language skills, for example, then they allow us to get some knowledge about the world around us, about our ourselves, about God, how to relate it to um, our curriculum and subjects to be proposed and so on. Director, how to do it so that we avoid, for example, extended Latin Classes. I remember Dr. Pavel Milcarek's speech last year when we, when he talked about uh, the problem related to this trivium model and its implementation as such, one-to-one. -one. It's not possible, but there is such a dilemma uh, ahead of us because if we try to invent some new means uh, to educate people and implement it only in institutions radically, this could create a kind of ghetto. And in fact, as a result of that, people who will graduate would not be able to feel a link between other institutions they will encounter in their lives. And on the other hand, if we manage to introduce it uh, in uh, all schools, uh, they it may somehow be reduced only to Latin classes. Three aspects uh, have been raised in your questions. And first of all, the first aspect I would like to refer to is that uh, some punctual change is introduced uh, at schools, which means to implement an element of classical education. For example, one hour of philosophy, one class of, or two classes of Latin language, or uh, any other element, without thinking it over and uh, without a global approach, it will have a uh, negative effect. There will be rejection. Everybody would think that it's uh, not necessary, that it's uh, uh, outdated, so we don't need it. When now moving on to the second and the third aspect of your um, question. I uh, see two remedies here. We cannot avoid uh, building small entities, communities outside of the system who would uh, um, allow for such an education. Uh, a curricula w would be based on classical education, and then this 
is more and more accepted and popular among the society. Because if we imagine that even though uh, the minister and the government is in favor of such a solution, if we re-steered the whole educational system and uh, impose by force some new curricula without preparing teachers, be, without making they, were, they aware of the fact what is classical education, it would be a disaster. So on the one hand, we should open some spaces. For example, one of these spaces is uh, teaching Latin from the seventh grade on the same basis as it was done uh, before when uh, pupils had to choose more between two modern languages. We will not f be forcing anyone. Uh, this given school, teachers, the director uh, can make their own decisions. It's their choice. So I don't believe in systemic implementation of uh, classical education, if I had to answer this question now. But I think there is hope because if we created some centers which would work based on this model, so based on uh, this natural interest uh, triggered um, among the society, it could uh, multiply. And uh, the uh, American example uh, is good. It's like an experiment, but not really, because classical education, in fact, is not an, an experiment. It's a, um, an educational model that, that has been working very well. All other models are, in fact, based on some pseudo-research uh, or analysis that have to prove that uh, we don't need to teach or we need to teach children to uh, read or to write. But in this state, it started from building uh, groups of people, preparing schools and teachers. Then those teachers uh, started opening schools. It's still not a mass phenomenon, but it's uh, visible in the American schooling system. Uh, during the previous Congresses, we had um, guests who shared uh, this kind of experience. So, like the Benedicts um, in antiquity, in the Middle Ages, they were transferring knowledge, but also forming the foundations of Christian culture. Father, uh, your college um, accepts high school graduates. So, how do you? assess and evaluate which elements from classical tradition are the most important to prepare young people to become students at your university. What would you stress the most? Which parts of uh, high school education could be beneficial for them? You mentioned Benedictine's uh, monastery schools. We know that this is that was precisely the beginnings of universities uh, were precisely monasteries because there were schools at the monasteries at the churches, and. This evolved later uh, into universities. I agree that universities are uh, in a crisis nowadays. And it's worthwhile, as we speak, it's worth remembering how uh, Benedict XVI was invited with an inauguration speech to a very big La Sapienza University in Rome. 67 professors signed a letter saying that the Pope should not go to the university because a university should remain autonomous. The church should not uh, should not. Uh, so the Pope um, didn't go because he's a humble person. 
so he didn't give that speech. But that university precisely was founded by the church. So it's really ridiculous or even funny how um, the faith and the reason sometimes cooperate with each other. So do you know how the students reacted? I think the day after or two days after, on Wednesday, there was an audience and about 10,000 young people came to the Pope and they said, they did not allow you to come to us, but we came to you. So this is how the young people reacted. Crowds and crowds of young people came to the Pope. Even though 67 professors blocked his speech at the university, that was itself created thanks to the church. So we shouldn't be afraid of those things that we took from classical education. Uh, this is interpreted in universities. Even in Catholic universities, we people do not accept metaphysics. They prefer sociology, psychology. They stress those uh, disciplines and metaphysics is not is eliminated so these are the effects if you don't want to deal with metaphysics you cannot have contact with the truth so if we want to live in the truth we should pay attention uh, to the areas of classical education that are there for us to use. So from the beginnings of our university, from the very start, we had the basis of a subject that is called the, the basis of Catholic worldview. So this is a subject that was created to because students have different um, attitudes. There was an atheist who participated in that class and uh, received, a, received a note at the end. He finished the course. So he didn't rebel against it, even though he was an atheist. So it's worth knowing the Christian foundations of our world when you are a young person becoming a young adult it's worthwhile to learn about the christian tradition it's nothing shameful it's a great gift that accelerates their maturation and they're able to have a critical view on the world and be open to that So someone who gets to know Christianity and becomes involved and engaged becomes a fuller human being who does not fear another person, even if that person becomes an enemy. We have the joy of turning enemies into friends. And as pupils and followers of Jesus, we always have the support and help from others. We never lose hope. We know that human beings can learn the truth in the end. There are also very, uh, um, quite many pleasant surprises. I love the initiative started by the minister, the courses of ethics for teachers. We've already had three editions and the teachers who come to us are fantastic people. They come to listen to lectures and to discover by working together 
that sometimes they have to disagree, sometimes they have to have a dispute. Because the teachers who start a postgraduate course in ethics, they are lonely in their schools. They feel lonely because their, uh, their view, uh, point of view is not tolerated. From um, the recent months, I have heard uh, from teachers who shared their experiences. They say that they go back to the school to change something, and they are blocked. If there was a debate, discussion between teachers, you would be able to confirm that it's quite difficult in schools, universities, speaking about the elites, teachers, professors. It would be hard to share. People often fear that they will be mocked for their uh, worldview. But I hope that the people who came to the Congress today know it quite well that we have received a very valuable gift in, uh, in the form of classical education and Christianity, and that is this worthwhile supporting each other in our own development, maturation, and raising children in the spirit of optimism. But what would you ask from high schools in terms of element of uh, introducing uh, classical education? I will try to answer this question in a moment, but before I do that, I have two reflections. Um, you mentioned Christian tradition, but uh, European tradition is simply Christian tradition. There is no other tradition in Europe. So this is the pinnacle of uh, European culture. There is nothing greater than Christian culture, the classical one, because sometimes we mistake it for with religion. This is the totality of culture, how we understand the world, uh, people, and God. This is classical European uh, tradition. The pinnacle of it is Christianity. There is no alternative to Christianity for the Greeks and Eval there is no alternative. Communism tried to become an alternative, and it fell down, and uh, it took many lives with it. Uh, other ideologies turned into totalitarianisms with abortion and so on and so forth. So this is what comes, uh, what happens when we reject um, Christian tradition. Horrible things happen. So. Uh, your, about your question, what we can do. First of all, can uh, classical education be for everybody or is it elitarian? I think that at first it has to be elitarian because it's impossible to do it any other way. There is a lot of pressure. It's hard to find people, candidates for this kind of education in order to study in this kind of school or university, you need money. So there is a lot of pressure. We live in a world of terrorism, and uh, there is a lot of pressure in the work environments. So we need to give alternatives to people for uh, enabling the survival of uh, classical culture. Not uh, like uh, we can see today, all the fashionable things, this doesn't work. We need elements of classical education um, introduced into schools, starting with teachers. First of all, we need to prepare the teachers to understand this culture, to understand its values, so they can follow the path and come into contact with the great masterpieces of human spirit, because usually they don't, they don't know. I talk to teachers and they lack uh, education. They know a lot, but they don't have much depth. So they haven't really uh, read great authors. They skipped that at school, maybe hurt a, a little bit, but that's not enough. You need more, you need to go deeper, you need contemplation. 
Another thing, we shouldn't stop children and young people from contemplating nature. We should do everything in our power for them to uh, interact with the real world, the flowers, the trees, the sky. We should keep them close to nature and the real world while uh, when they go online, they live in the virtual world. There is a p lot of positivism in schools and it negates the secret of nature. Everything feels normal and not, it's not. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, it's a miracle. The world is a miracle. So we should wonder about it. Uh, the butterflies, human beings, the trees, those are all special things, great things, and not something normal. We view it as a set of atoms or cells, but it's more than that. So complicating, contemplating the world was the basis for Greek philosophy. We need to go back to those roots, not just in biology classes. Just go on a walk to the forest, go to a farm to see and touch a cow. So those uh, children have a moment to s stop, to pause for a moment and uh, simply feel the awe of uh, the world. And that would change their perception. The culture and nature in their entire greatness that would be a great recipe, a great prescription. But we still have a couple of minutes, so we can uh, take questions from the audience. Uh, please uh, tell who should answer your question, or maybe if everybody, then say that everybody. Thank you very much. I will be talking about high schools because I represent a high school. My question is to Professor Dubac. So how can we uh, carry out classical education in schools? The classical high school in Ostrowenka, uh, under the patronage of Jaroszewski Dłubacz, um, we have a book, Culture of Philosophy, and we teach uh, children uh, the culture of philosophy. So there is an opportunity for us to carry out certain parts of uh, classical education, but this shouldn't be just for a narrow group. We both, every profession needs it. Uh, a doctor needs it, and the engineer also needs this basis of culture. So teachers need to be better formed, of course. It's a beautiful initiative that the Catholic University um, in Lublin has uh, some additional courses for teachers in rhetoric. Uh, those are additional two-year studies. Some elements of philosophy the philosophy of being and anthropology could also be included in such courses for teachers to form them better, to give them a sound foundation of knowledge and culture, then we would have better opportunities. In our high schools, we've been, we had uh, Latin for years. And we do have Latin language in our schools. We have elements of Greek as well. You can have four uh, hours of that, and then philosophy and rhetoric and calligraphy in the first class of high school. It's possible. Those are the elements that are necessary, and it can be done. But if we don't have a uh, possibility to have, well, maybe two hours of Latin a week in every school, but when there is no teacher, what will happen uh, online? Maybe classes online, because this has to be linked somehow. Uh, you plan Latin classes, but then there is no teacher. There are no teachers who can teach that uh, Latin class. But the um, prescription right now would be simple. Firstly, you need to form the teachers. You need to explain to them that this kind of um, education as a knowledge of truth, observing nature, this is something that gives an opportunity to pupils to to wonder at the greatness of being, of nature, of truth, but still there needs to be a teacher who will explain it to them. That's what I wanted to say, and I want to ask if this uh, culture of philosophy is available 
I bought it once. I have a PDF for my students, but if possible, it would be good to have it on paper. It's an illegal product, this PDF, because you must have downloaded it. But of course, it was uh, published in Krakow by Biały Kruk Publishing House. So for everyone who wants to buy it, it will be available soon. I agree with your diagnosis. Everyone needs it. Uh, teachers don't know what they know, and they know they don't know what uh, to learn. It's a complex issue. Uh, we need to raise awareness, and it's uh, the role somehow of all of us. So these elements are necessary for everyone. There is an idea of introducing philosophy to schools, but how to do it? Administratively, of course, it's simple, but as uh, for those who will be uh, teaching it and how what it will look like. Philosophy, it's a burden for uh, pupils. It's like uh, during the studies and uh, it, there is a lot of relativism. And the second thing is in the cultural context. context. There is postmodernist and uh, council culture um, approach. So uh, everyone learns to uh, pass exams. And uh, th those are sick times, uh, rejection of truth, rejection of uh, uh, everything that is of value. So uh, one more question. There is an opportunity to ask a question. One more question, one last question. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a question to Professor. I've been moved by what you said. I would like to share a reflection is that last year I was at the University of Bologna and it was in a very different context. But there was an incident there that uh, wouldn't allow me to enter a given room. I wanted to know what it was about. And it turned out that uh, s uh, someone committed a suicide. It was a student. Everyone was really moved. There was a demonstration there. And I wanted to examine this uh, case. And I asked uh, young people what they thought. All the transparents, uh, they were uh, like the banners were um, of military character and uh, leftists, uh, some leftist thoughts were exposed there. But it was as you said, this was the same diagnosis. This um, uh, suicide was related to the fact that the student uh, couldn't afford to, um, to live on his own uh, because they were complaining that they live in like a factory, that they were product of the system of uh, education, and they would diagnose the situation uh, similarly to what you just said. Professor, do you see uh, the same kind of phenomena in Poland, and how would you comment on that? There is no truth, there is no goodness, there is no uh, freedom. I'm a subject. I'm no one. I'm an object in the world of objects. If uh, a university aims at producing students, a human being that would be would have good professional skills, uh, there's objective subjectivization of um, people because what is important is to teach. Uh, profession. And this is a great uh, mistake because uh, the role of the university is to give a meaning to someone's life, to show the truth, uh, to show uh, to someone that he or she is important for uh, everyone, and uh, to show freedom and truth, and to choose the good and not the bad. If uh, it's not the case, uh, they uh, don't see any meaning in their lives, and there is a huge wave of suicides. Uh, during the last 10 years, uh, we've had 10,000 uh, people wanted to change their gender. Uh, it's crazy. Those are mainly young people. They don't, uh, they, their, their lives don't mean anything to them. It's crazy. They don't agree with the nature, with being a human being, a woman or a man. So we can see that they've lost the meaning of their life. They don't know what what they are. That's why universities were established. That's why ancient Greece 
did it uh, so that we become wise and now we've lost everything we lost the meaning of our lives and uh, uh, it can all collapse as it was said so uh, we still in Poland we are still doing well because the Catholic Church was a great institution and uh, it was the soul of our culture but uh, also the church is now experiencing uh, this uh, crisis uh, Benedict uh, the 16th uh, talked about it uh, and our role as uh, members of the academia is very important we have to teach the meaning of uh, life of truth Tru truth uh, gives freedom and because I can do uh, a lot, but I have the opportunity to be free and I can steer my life to become happy. And I have an influence on my life. The main discovery of European culture was the identification of a human being as a person. There is everything for everyone, whatever uh, the condition of a given person is, he or she is a person, has the same rights. Christ uh, died for everyone for to save them. Uh, it is in our culture tend to forget about it and uh, we tend to reject it and mock it. And uh, we have the obligation to confirm the truth. That's why we are at universities, even though uh, some people tend to marginalize our role, but everyone is responsible for their lives and uh, follow uh, what they are doing and they have to do it honestly and the best they can and this is what we encourage people to do that's why we have such congresses thank you very much for this debate